Hello, my lovely hummingbirds. How's it going, everyone? On today's episode of Makeup and Motivation here on Pop Culture, we are going to be transforming into the one, the only, Bon. Who is Bon? <laughs> the man of my dreams. Um, I'm kidding. <laughs> so toxic. Uh, so, kind of, but not really. I mean, look at him. Um, <laughs> so Bon is one of the characters <laughs> in the anime on Netflix titled The Seven Deadly Sins. He is the fox sin of greed. And we're going to transform into Bon, sort of. I'm not like going to do the whole um, actual turning into him. I'm just going to be the female version of Bon. And I have a cute top that goes with it. So, yeah, that's what we're doing because today's topic is all about greed. And what that means in the journey of self-healing and self-love. So, yeah, let's get into the makeup look. Uh, it's not necessarily Bon inspired. It's more like a golden look. And... Because, you know, greed, all the glitters is not gold, that good shit. Also, this look was originally based on tiramisu, which I guess in retrospect would have been better for gluttony. But that tiramisu was just delicious. <laughs> um, I'll probably snip it in a thing from the original video I had recorded circa a year ago. <laughs> this is the tiramisu that I got. Look at it, look at those layers. Beautiful. But, oh, that sounded delicious. For this, I'm not using essentially any of that video now, but that's for another series coming later this week. And yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm done explaining. Let's get into the makeup look. All right, my lovely hummingbirds, to kick off this look, we are going to go with the Zulu by Juvia's Place palette in that gorgeous brown. And yes, you are going to make it look like you're going to do a cut crease with this eyeshadow. You're not, but just shape it that way and make sure you go above your crease on your eyelid. Up next on our outer lid, we are going to go with the Prelude Exposed Palette from Lime Crime in the shade Storm to really build on that chocolatey goodness layer. Up next from the same palette in the shade 1484, we are going to apply that to the middle of our eyelids and really just fluff that out a bit there. Then from the Prelude Chroma palette in the shade Triumph, we're going to go and apply that to our upper brow bone area. I know it looks yellow, I'm aware. Then <laughs> last but not least, Again, from the Prelude Exposed Palette in the shade Aphrodisia, we're going to take that to the inner corner of our eyes and just, you know, fluff it out a little bit like butterfly wings. Expand it. And once you have all your shades on, you're going to take a floofy brush and you are going to blend everything out. Make sure you got something to wipe that brush on so you don't get all the excess everywhere. And it looks like a nice, pretty little mosaic. So, huh? Tiramisu inspired or what? In the meantime, I'm going to go put on the rest of my face and you can go ahead and follow me on all of my handles. 
And there she is. Look at her. Is she giving a foxy senior of greed? Is she giving a foxy lady? Is she giving... Oh my god, my tits are making this top drop. Absolutely. Well, I hope you guys enjoy this gorgeous look as much as I loved creating it. If this is where you're leaving me, les mando mucha paz, muchos besos, y les recuerdo que miren hacia la luna. Sending you much peace, many kisses, and reminding you to always look up at the moon. If it is not, stick around for Be Greedy With Me. Hello, my lovely hummingbirds. How's it going, everyone? On today's episode, <laughs> yes, I am Bon the Foxin. Of greed. Um, <laughs> you guys like my top? It's so cold. So sexy. <laughs> uh, my look at a un lado. I'm not fucking with this wig as much as I would like. It's super shiny. I'm gonna need to add some things to make it a little, a little less, a little less shiny. But I kind of like the shiny on this one just because it's blue. And it gives it like a flame effect. You know, I might do a Hades thing before before I dull the shine on this. Um, <laughs> but it's long as fuck. I know I don't have this spiky bond hair in that, but that's okay, you know? That's, that's okay. That's okay. Elaine will be fine. Um, <laughs> now, if you're wondering why bond, well, Bon is one of the characters on the Seven Deadly Sins anime on Netflix. He is, as I mentioned, the fox sin of greed. Why a fox? Because there is no one slicker than a fox. He was a thief as a human. Yes, he started off human. He started off human um, and gained... Sorry, I'm like... There is a blue one right across my vision it's bothering me <laughs> what was i saying <laughs> so he is the yes he is the fox sin of greed and he started off as a human in the series but then because you know he had to oh spoiler alerts if you haven't watched seven deadly sins yet i'm so sorry my bad he became immortal, essentially immortal and with like super strength and all these healing abilities. The only person that couldn't, uh, he couldn't heal from entirely that actually left a scar, I should say, was Meliodas, his best friend, who is son of the Demon King and is supposed to take the throne as Demon King. <laughs> but... Yeah, so essentially Bond's story is he hears about the Fountain of Youth um, and it is in a tree or on top of a tree where the fairies live and that is how the fairy kingdom essentially maintains itself alive and all this good shit. He goes to steal it because he considers himself the best thief in the world. And... <laughs> He runs into the love of his life, Elaine. They fall in love after seven days, of course, right? How could you not? Shout out to Romel Santos. Um, <laughs> and, you know, after she falls in love with him, she tries to, like, give him the gift of immortality. All this shit happens. Demon attacks, kills her. She makes him take the Fountain of Youth. He drinks it, defeats the demon, saves the kingdom, buries her inside the tree, and then comes routinely to pour his own blood back on the tree so that the fairy kingdom and, well, it, all the land and all that can stay alive because they get their magic from the tree. Um, <laughs> and if you're wondering, what the fuck does this have to do with anything? <laughs> As the title so aptly entails this has to do with greed but not necessarily what greed actually is which is this it is more so of the selfishness that is perceived during the healing journey 
much like Bon, who was obviously falsely accused, sentenced, and marked as a sin for stealing the Fountain of Youth, in the process of healing oneself, we are always told that wanting to make time for ourselves, wanting to heal ourselves, wanting to really improve our life and where it is and the standing that we have is selfish, that it is greedy, that we are asking for too much, that we are desiring for too much, especially when we start like really placing those boundaries in and people don't like it, especially if it's people that we never really had boundaries with before, you get attacked and you get told that you're being selfish and you get told you're being greedy and you get told that you're different and you weren't like this before. It's okay. I'm here to tell you it's okay. And as much as it sucks and oftentimes I know like we, especially when like we start the healing journey, like for real, for real, we really want to take everybody with us because we're like, oh my God, I'm doing so great. And I learned all these things and everyone close to me needs to know this and I need to share everything and all this shit. Majority of the time though, we can't take everyone with us. And that's the part that sucks. Because in this process, once you start setting the boundaries for yourself, once you start requiring more than the bare minimum of people, you start to realize how many people just really are not there for you, really don't fuck with you like that. And it can start to feel really lonely. However, if Elaine can roam this earth for like 700 fucking years and take care of a tree in the middle of the, I don't think it was even in the middle of the forest, they were like in an opening, and do that shit all on her own, you can too. But oh my god, Monroe, I have needs. Bitch, me too. Dildos, vibrators, pocket pussies, cock rings, whatever it is that you need to fadangle your dangle. Pleasure your hoo-ha. <laughs> you can do that if you need moments of like you know, intimacy and all that, like, hey, you know, I'm not here to tell you you can't heal and hoe around at the same fucking time. I'm saying that's not optimal because there's like a whole lot of energy that is required in order for you to really start in this healing journey. But the more that you define what it is that you need And I've said this before, it, it was a quote, this person said it, and they basically were saying like, you know, in the process of bringing your manifestations to life, be aware of the double-edged sword that comes with it. And in society, it is very, you know, now it's like expanding a little more from what I've seen, but typically the thought process is that if you do anything for yourself, you are essentially being a selfish bitch. You're not. We live in a world that is very go, go, go about everything. We live in a world that is very fast paced and we live on a world that thrives on consumption and instant gratification, especially here stateside. Minor story time. So I have a friend. Let's call this friend Clarice. <laughs> and when Clarice started dating again, about a year ago, roughly. Mm. Yeah, no, wait, where are we in? 2023. Um, went on a couple dates, right? Just to get back out there. And at the end of both of these dates, the lovely gentleman that she went out with, because both dates were banging, they were amazing, they were so much fun. But something in her was just like, not you though. 
this was cool, but not you though. And each gentleman was like, can I get a kiss? Can I kiss you? And she was like, mm, no, but you have a good night though, right? And went about her merry way to go home. The response was the same. Uh, one was very direct. I was like, this isn't gonna work out. I need someone that's more this and more that and blah, blah, blah. And she's like, okay, cool, have a good day. And the other guy was like, you know, did I do something wrong? This and then she's like, no, I just wasn't feeling it. And then he said his piece that he had to speak so he could sleep better at night. And she was like, okay, cool, have a good day. And then Clarice sat at home and was like, is it me? <laughs> Am I the drama? And really wondering if like she'd done something wrong, if she was being a prude in some way, shape or form for not having wanted to kiss these guys. And, you know, <laughs> she starts questioning like, you know, I wasn't really like this. Like I was uh, ho supreme and I was doing all this shit and I was grandmaster ho and I've done X, Y, and Z and done all this, like, gone to some parties and <laughs> all this shit, right? Just breaking down the history below the belt. And she's like, when did I all of a sudden become so, in her mind, prudish? And she came to the conclusion that no. I was not wrong for not wanting to interact with an individual beyond my level of comfort in that situation, especially because, well, we are still very much so in the beginning of post COVID and with new cases every day, you know, just so many variables. I'm going to keep messing with this wig. I really don't want YouTube to like believe that I don't have a shirt on. It's a shirt. <laughs> Um, but I might throw a sweater on if I'm completely honest with y'all in a second, but <sighs> you know, she, she was really questioning this and I'm sitting here like, fuck those guys, right? Because I get it, but why? So I start sitting there and I'm pondering and I'm breaking it down and essentially it came to the result of, well, we live in a world of instant gratification where people need to know immediately if something worked or if something didn't, if something was good enough or if it wasn't. And you see it in a lot, not just with dating, but like also music, art, so many things. Like how many times have you not heard a creator? Like I've posted something and didn't get more than three likes in the first couple minutes and I fucking deleted that shit. Or, oh my god, this artist released this album this year, and like two months later, we're like, we need more music. Or, shit, uploading a video <laughs> on YouTube, and I'm like, damn, it has like three views. Should I take it down? In order to heal in order to love yourself and in order to learn how to refill your cup in this life, you have to learn how to be patient with yourself, how to take your time, and yes, how to be greedy and selfish as fuck with your time, your energy, and your resources. Now, if you're Bond and like, you know, you're fucking immortal and <laughs> can get chopped up to pieces like Deadpool and then like, you know, yourself, well, that's a whole other thing. But if you're human and you don't have the mental space to chill with somebody, you can say no you don't have the energy to keep a relationship going that is very one-sided 
you can say thank you for your time kindly, I must move on. Or, you know, however is best to handle in that situation for you. Yes, you're gonna lose people in the process. Yes, it's gonna suck. I'm not gonna tell you it doesn't. It's gonna suck. And the amount of times you even go out, the amount of times you choose to intoxicate yourself, the amount of times that you choose on gossip, the amount of times that you choose to go do things that you're not really into is gonna shrink. And then the limbo period happens. And then the like, oh my God, what, what was the word that they use? It was like neutral where it's, it's nothing's happening, right? You have your good, you're bad, and then nothing. And when the nothing happens, oh, the crave full of chaos. It is so, like, right? And you're like, you know what? I'm gonna go fuck. <laughs> so, you know, you're out here, you're like, I'm gonna go fuck somebody. Uh, oh my god, what's the latest tea? What's the latest tea? What's been happening? And you start getting into other people's business that frankly doesn't fucking concern you. And the thirst to self sabotage, how far you've come, happens. But it doesn't come in as like a conscious awareness, it comes in as a subconscious thing because you're like so used to the chaos, so used to thriving in insanity and in madness and all this like unsettled energy that when you're finally in a moment of peace, you start craving it. And those are the moments that your coping skills need to really come in handy. And not like the TikTok sound right now that's trending of like, oops, got your coping skills. What do we have here? And then, you know, mine is a cup of coffee and cosplay. <laughs> It is. We know this. This is why I made this channel. <laughs> but actual healthy coping skills. Now there are like the comfort coping skills that do help. And if like you're not hurting anyone or yourself in the process, then it's okay. And we all falter. We're all human. We all essentially bounce back to some shit we shouldn't be doing. Especially when we have a lot of voices around us telling us that we're being different, that we're being weird, that this wasn't us a few months ago. Where did this come from all of a sudden? Um, you're going to regret this later. There's like a... Yeah, I don't know. This is, this is a very interesting wig this time around. And I'm just struggling. <laughs> There was a thing that I said to one of my besties and we were having a conversation and I, about something going on with her and I told her, I was like, yeah, I'm like, that's completely normal. Everybody like, like we all want attention. And she kind of like pulled back and I was like, wait, before you freak out, I'm not calling you an attention whore. I was like, as people especially to all my lovely hummingbirds out there if you guys have suffered some form of neglect in your youth some form of abandonment you crave attention you crave that validation from somewhere else right and I was like you know there's a lot of things that have garnered a very negative connotation selfishness has been labeled onto being specific with your time and energy and 
greed with your resources and then attention has been labeled as a negative thing but the thing is we're human we all want it we all seek it, we all require it to some degree. And I was like, it's okay to want to build intentional relationships with individuals. What does an intentional relationship look like? Well, you respect each other's boundaries. That's one of them. You listen to the person as much as they listen to you. It's a very reciprocal thing. Reciprocity is key. Reciprocity is the key of life. And you are willing to, per what you're able to do, be there. Oftentimes, we get stuck in these places of comfort with people that we have known for a really long time because one, oh my God, they know so much shit about me and they're still here or oh my God, they know so much shit about me and like, well, it's better this than nothing. No. Regardless, people are gonna talk People are going to say whatever the fuck they want. They will build any fucking narrative around your existence. The more you start to thrive. It is okay to be greedy and selfish for your health, for your self-improvement, for your growth, for your stability, for your development in life. It is okay to not want to extend or overextend your energy and resources on people, places, or things. While, yes, I am a person that heavily believes in the universe and God and angels and ancestors and spirits and divine beings and all that good shit, I also know that the first guardians of our lives, besides, you know, if you believe in God or not, is ourselves. We determine what stays and what goes now of course i've mentioned before like there's the other circumstances and all that shit but for the most part we decide am i really willing to pull it put up with pull up <laughs> we're pulling up on this bitch okay i'm sorry um <laughs> am i really willing to put up with this person, with the situation, with using my resources on someone or something that is not me per whatever my current situation is, regardless of my situation, and really take the time to like analyze that shit. There was this manifestation tip that I saw a couple years ago on TikTok, which like crazy, it's already been a couple years. Um, but <laughs> And this was like a romantic thing about manifestation. And she did say like, you can apply it to more than just that. And I have, I'm not gonna lie to you, I have. I was like, okay, you know, let's apply it to like career. Let's apply it to life. Let's apply it to health, all this stuff. But it is the act of listing 88 things that you desire. And Again, this was like for a romantic thing, which like perfect. I mean, we're almost starting Valentine's Day. Please be careful. Do not manifest somebody that is not supposed to be in your life, my loves. We, we're not doing that in time, time three. You're spiritual. You use your proper discernment. Anyway, don't just go out here doing the old method on anyone and anybody. Because that's not. All I'm going to say, do your research. Don't fuck around and find out and get yourself in a fucked up situation. Okay? Cool. So, you list 88 things. And this we're talking about life, right? Say you want to build yourself up. What does that version of you look like? Are you more physically active, right? Like, are you like, okay, I want to run every single fucking day. Cool. 
Where are you gonna start though? Are you just gonna get up and start fucking running? Do you even know what it takes to run? Like, you gotta do research, right? So with everything that you list, of how you want to improve your life, be intentional about the work that is gonna have to go into every single one of those 88 things. And the self-awareness that's gonna go into it as well. Because you can't just be out here like, okay, por ejemplo, me. if I'm like, okay, I want to read more. Cool, what books am I looking to read? What do I like to read? What do I not like to read? Am I trying to challenge myself with this? I want to read more, right? And realistically, where can I put it into my schedule? I want to dance more. Okay, how much am I currently dancing, right? So first, make your list of everything you want to do to develop yourself as a person this year. And then break it down to the work that you're willing to do to make that a reality. You're not Spider-Man, you're not gonna get bit by a radioactive spider and all of a sudden not gonna need glasses and fucking have strength and can climb walls and shit. Lord, it has been entirely too long, my brain just goes left field. Anyway. <laughs> I might have to make this video 18 plus, well all my videos are essentially restricted age-wise, because I'm like, mm, I know my mouth and I know the things I say. <laughs> What's the work that you're willing to put in? What is it that you want in life? And are you willing to be greedy and selfish with your time and with your energy to make it happen. You do not grow overnight. You do not change overnight. You Like, first off, I personally have a thing where like, I think that fundamentally, like at our core, we don't ever change because the journey of life is essentially us coming back to ourselves. So like, you know what, what made little you happy and like all that good shit, right? But I mean change in regards to growth. How do we become the best version of ourselves and how do we become the version of ourselves that makes us absolutely ecstatic every morning that we wake up? Like, yes, I am this person. I love this about me. You know, how... Do we do that? Well, first, start making that list. Yes, the 88 things of what you want your life to look like. After you've made this list, sit there for a hot minute and wonder why. Why is it that I want to do these things? Why is it that I want to be this person? And then break down everything that you're willing to do for it everything that you're willing to give up for it. As much as we give, we receive in this life, but to some degree, we must also sacrifice things. <laughs> but I just had, okay, so in The Princess and the Frog, um, Tiana's always working, right? And she's always working to save up for her restaurant and like working, 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 and she has friends and they're like, Oh my god, like you don't even go out with us anymore. You're always working. You're always doing this. You're always doing that. And she's like, you know, I'm saving for my restaurant. She's like, yeah, 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 we know, whatever, right? So then they basically are just like, see, I told you she wouldn't come. All this shit. And it hurts her because, well, valid that it does, right? Especially, I mean, you know, we don't got no background story on the movie, but... Say those are friends that she grew up with or friends that were there for her when her dad died or friends that were there for her during like a very difficult moment. And then she has to essentially lose all of them 
to fight for her dreams. Well, granted, was Tiana overworking herself absolutely, and that's also one of the lessons in the movie. Like, she gotta learn how to have fun. Balance is key. But, make sure that the people, places, things, and situations that you are surrounding yourself with are aligned with where you're trying to go. And make decisions accordingly. Yes, we all have different interests, different like hobbies, different things like that. And like, not all of your friends are going to be into the same fucking things, right? But if you pause and you look around and you realize that the people around you aren't actually supporting you, you need to reevaluate some things and you need to get a little more greedy with your time. But if you start being greedy with your time in order to focus on yourself and you get labeled as greedy with a negative connotation behind it, like the actual term for the word, Those aren't people you gotta have around you. It's okay to be selfish. It's okay to be selfish with your time, with your energy, with you. And it is okay to want more out of life than what is simply being presented to you and understand not everyone is going to see your vision the way you do. That's why it was given to you to see because you're the one that's going to work on it. So take time, breathe, and intentionally spend time with yourself planning for the type of life that you want to live because it's your life to live okay that's it for me i've been rambling for like half an hour i love y'all so 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 much be greedy, be selfish, it's okay if anyone is like, oh my god, da -da -da -da, tell them to go fuck themselves respectfully. You're busy, you got shit to accomplish out here. You can't be out here running the streets 24-7 because you got shit to do. You know, cabrona, pero cariño está. And indulge in the beauty of your own energy because if you can't stand you, baby, you got some work to do. Okay? I love you all so much. Have a beautiful day. Enjoy life. Write down your 88 things that you want for your transformation. And it doesn't all have to be like crazy big drastic transformations. It could just be like actually getting sufficient sleep. Drinking less caffeine. I know. <laughs> it sounds like chaos. Trust me, I, I'm trying not succeeding, clearly, but I'm trying. It really is gonna be okay. I love you so much, my lovely hummingbirds. I'll see y'all tomorrow. As always, les mando mucha paz, muchos besos, y les recuerdo que miren hacia la luna. Sending you much peace, many kisses, and reminding you to always look up at the moon. Follow me on all of my handles, all that good shit. Uh, and yeah, it's okay to be greedy and selfish for you for once. And it's okay to want more than just simply the bare minimum. Because y'all, the Barbie in hell sometimes. Okay? Alright, that's it. I love you. Have a good one. I will see you on the next one. Bye!